Tonight on Newswatch 18, students have spoken and the ballots are in. In case you haven't heard how the elections turned out, stay tuned and find out. And it's almost flu season, but some students here on campus are worrying about a different type of virus. See how zombies are crea creating quite a stir at ISU. And crossing the sidewalk may seem like a simple thing for you and me, but Chris Quayar shows us how important it is to carefully cross that pavement. All that with weather and sports tonight on Newswatch 18. Good evening and welcome to Newswatch 18. I'm Jared Ransom. And I'm Emily Bloomquist. The votes have been tallied and the results are in. And it looks a lot like the 80s. Former Governor Terry Branstad is now Governor-elect. He defeated incumbent Governor Chet Culver by a margin of 10%. Everything that I do, but I will always do my best. Republican Governor-elect Terry Branstad has requested that all State Department heads submit letters of resignation to him in the near future. He says he will review the letters and decide who will be asked to keep their jobs. One possible candidate who may receive a job under Branstad's leadership is Secretary of State Michael Morrow, who lost his re-election bid on Tuesday. Another one of Branstad's first priorities after he takes office in January is to put together a spending plan that shrinking, to shrink the government by 15% over five years. Leaders in Iowa's new split party legislature say they're supportive of this plan and think his idea has merit. Another election story that's getting a lot of attention is the failure to retain Iowa's Supreme Court judges. Now, this is the first time since the judicial merit system was implemented in Iowa in 1962 that justices have not been retained. Although Governor Chet Culver could nominate replacement judges, Governor-elect Terry Branstad urges Iowa's government to leave this issue for him to sort out when he takes office in January. Beginning this Saturday, Ames residents can dispose of their yard waste for free. Residents can bring their yard waste to Boulder Creations, located at 407 Freel Drive from 8 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon. And participants are asked to enter Boulder Creations from Southeast 5th Street. The drop-off service will happen every Saturday this November, though you can only drop off brush material this Saturday. Many of you have noticed the infestation of red and green bandanas on campus. ISU TV's Brandon Blue has the story behind the zombie game taking over Iowa State. Simple but appealing. Zombie invasion, at times called humans versus zombies, or HVZ, is in short a giant game of tag played over campus for an entire month. Its overarching narrative of a zombie apocalypse tasks participants garbed in green bandanas, the zombies, to tag players with red ones, who are humans. Freshman in insect science Jacob Fritz says that to win, the humans have to stick together. My winning strategy would be to stay in a group as long as possible. You have more eyes and ears than you do by yourself. You can easily see, oh look, there's a zombie coming. Or look, there's 50 zombies coming, let's run. The humans are in for a long haul. The game began on October 29th and isn't over until a month later on November 29th. That's four difficult weeks when all that stands between you and the undead horde are a couple of tube socks. Any zombie player hit with a sock must freeze for 10 seconds. Junior in mathematics Mason Frank is playing as a zombie and says that the paranoia plaguing human players would have been too much for him. And originally I was like, well, I'm going to be a human. I'm going to avoid the infection. And when I really thought of it, I, was, I told myself, I don't really want to watch my back for an entire month. That's like, I don't want to be walking around campus. So uh, I was like, I emailed the guy and said, I'll be one of the original zombies. And he's like, all right, you're one of them. Zombie players have to infect at least one human per week by tagging them. Otherwise, they die and are out of the game for good. But Mason doesn't need to worry about the quota. He's already infected several people. The second guy I actually got, he uh, it was in the courtyard over at the Barton, that courtyard over there. And I was going around, and I, I saw a guy walking across the courtyard. So my, my friend like gunned it and like curb checked, went over the curb and like slammed on the brakes. And the guy started running because I was jumping out and I chased him down. And he didn't have a sock. I'm like, why the hell didn't you have a sock? He, he's like, I didn't think I'd see any zombies the first day. 
Created in 2005 by students at Goucher College, Humans vs. Zombies has been lauded by the International Herald Tribune as the antidote for the ailments of a generation and has been played on every continent except Antarctica. Thank you, Brandon. If you'd like to know more about the zombie invasion game, please visit humansvszombies.org. If you're a Cymail or Gmail user, you're probably familiar with the word buzz, and that's because it's a part of the online mail system that Google implemented a while back. There was quite a stir over some privacy settings, and Google may be paying for it now. A lawsuit is being heard in California for a settlement that would require Google to create an $8.5 million fund. The majority of that fund will go to organizations focused on internet privacy education. If you use Buzz, you have until January 31st to decide what you want to do about the suit. To find out more, go to buzzclassaction.com. Now the story of the past two days has been cold weather and wind. Are those trends we are going to see in the next few days? Well, hopefully over the next day or so, winds will start to die down a little bit. Uh, tonight it's supposed to be very cold and that's going to continue for a couple of days. But for the most part, we have kind of a little bit of a treat in store for this weekend. For Day Planner though, you can see 26 is about the low for tonight and it'll get up to about 46 tomorrow. For your full weekend forecast, stay tuned. Making it green is making sure the air in your home is healthy for your family to breathe. Make sure you test your home for the presence of radon. It's easy. To learn more, call 866-730-GREEN. Preserve your family's health and well-being. Get your home tested. Now that's living healthy and green. Green, green, green. It's your home, it's your dream. Radon test and keep it healthy and clean. Make it green. To learn more, call 866-730-GREEN. Welcome back to Newswatch 18. We're going to take a look at your weather around the state. Uh, for the most part, it's been pretty calm, 45 degrees, um, so not very warm. Uh, definitely, we're starting to get into those winter temperatures. You can see 45 in Ankeny, 46 in Sheridan, so pretty much mid-40s for most of the area. And that trend is going to continue throughout the state. Davenport actually saw a little, a few reports of snow earlier today, but it melted very quickly since they're sitting at 44. Again, mid 40s for the majority of the state. And tomorrow we're definitely going to be seeing a little bit of a cold blast as it won't be getting near as warm as we're used to. Lows for today, you can see 41 degrees, 34 up in Mason City. So again, we're starting to get down in the 30s where we have to worry about freezing. Mason City is sitting out about 58 for the high today, 63 in Des Moines, so right around 60 degrees for the majority of the state. Uh, so some very nice fall weather. If we look at tonight, you can see we're going to get down to 24, uh, so it'll be very chilly compared to what we're used to. Definitely a hard freeze tonight. Northwest winds will be calming down around 10 to 15 miles an hour. Today they were gusting up to about 20 to 25. Uh, that 10 to 15 miles an hour will continue into tomorrow, so a little bit blustery. 46 degrees for the high for tomorrow, so again, very cold, a lot colder than we're used to. And you can see that trend continues into this weekend as we go into Saturday, 59 degrees. But then Sunday and Monday, we have a pleasant surprise with mid-60s for the temperatures uh, going into early next week. With that, I'll send it back to Jared. Get ready to get pumped up for the Nebraska game. The Fredrickson Court Community Council is hosting a Shuck Nebraska pep rally this Friday night starting at 10. In attendance will be Jeff Johnson, GSP Vice President Nate Dobbles, and an ISU pep band. If you're hungry, there will be corn on the cob eating contest, followed by an all-you-can-eat pancake feed for just a dollar until midnight. And this fall has proven to be a dangerous time for pe people walking by roads with a student death after a football game and another death in a car accident. So what can you do to stay safe when crossing the pavement? ISU TV's Chris Cuellar and David Durong report. It may seem simple, but Iowa State students have had a serious problem staying safe crossing the street this school year. 
Pedestrian traffic is a concern in any college town, with kids trying to get from class to class or come home from university events. But with two deaths and more recent injuries in car versus human accidents, it has become clear that motorists and walkers need to become more aware. ISU Police Sergeant Elliot Flohr thinks the law can create some issues, but not as many as pedestrians or motorists just not paying enough attention. A lot of times they're busy and they're preoccupied. That's when bad things can happen. So, you know, we, we talk from when freshmen get onto campus, when we talk about personal safety and orientation, you kind of have to keep your head on a swivel and you've got to pay attention to your surroundings. You need to know where you're at on campus. Oftentimes, they want to yield, but they simply are not given enough time to do so. ISU student Jonathan Brown was struck and killed by a vehicle here, an area off of South 16th Street near student tailgating lots. Senior Dustin Payton wasn't killed, but on the opposite side of town was struck by a vehicle on Monday and has a cracked hip from the accident. I've, I think I've been knocked off a bicycle at that intersection before and I just got a Facebook message from another um, young lady who's been hit at that intersection, I think just last month. So apparently people just aren't paying attention. So I think people just need to be more aware that, I mean, this is really close to campus. There are going to be a lot of people who live nearby that are crossing this to get to campus. And it's Peyton says he wasn't distracted or paying attention to anything else that may have caused the collision. I, when I was crossing and I saw the van approach the intersection, I remember looking up to try to make eye contact with the driver. Yeah. Um, um, and she wasn't on her cell phone or anything either, um, but she just never looked in my direction. Ames and ISU police are working together to make these accidents less frequent. Sergeant Flora can't do much more than stress how easy it is just to wait. So you get into that is that person in the crosswalk? Are they close enough? Are they going to step out? So it's kind of a guessing game for both the pedestrian and the motorist. Definitely, if I'm a pedestrian, I'm going to err on the side of caution and simply wait, wait for a safe time to cross the street. With so many students jaywalking, Flora is surprised it doesn't happen more often. Absolutely. I, we could have several of these every day. I okay. There's lots of close calls all over campus and in the city of Ames, unfortunately. To ensure pedestrian car accidents don't occur more often, it's simple. Look both ways and be mindful of other traffic. For iState News, I'm Chris Cuellar with David DeRong. Coming up after the break, Aaron Bauer joins us at the desk for a sports update. Stay tuned right here to Newswatch 18. Sus síntomas pueden ser tan confusos como los de enfermedades cardíacas. Al igual que la diabetes, su origen es biológico. Y tal como el cáncer, como el cáncer puede ser mortal. Se llama depresión. Depresión. Y tal, tal como, como para, para otras, otras enfermedades, enfermedades graves, graves, existe un tratamiento. Así que hay esperanza. Esperanza. Hay esperanza para todos que la tienen. Aprenda más en depresionesreal.org. Welcome back. The Iowa State women's tennis team will wrap up their season this weekend in Kalamazoo, Michigan, the Western Michigan University Super Challenge. This will be the Cyclones' fourth and final tournament of the season. Iowa State will get, compete against many teams across the country in singles and doubles matches. Cyclones open play Friday with doubles matches against Indiana, and best of luck this weekend goes out to IS, ISU TV's own Aaron Coronas. The number 20 Iowa State women's basketball team will have its first action of the season as they host Minnesota State in an exhibition matchup. The Cyclones will be led into the matchup tonight by lone senior Kelsey Bolte. Bolte ranks third among active Big 12 players with 1,082 points. Tonight's game will also be the first event held inside Hilton Coliseum after the heavy floods damaged the Coliseum earlier this year. Tip-off is scheduled for 7. Just in case anyone forgot, there is an important football game this weekend. The number 7 Nebraska Cornhuskers are in town for the final time. The game this Saturday will have a huge significance on the Big 12 North standings. Iowa State controls its own destiny, and if the Cyclones win their final three games, they will play for the Big 12 North Championship. Nebraska has dominated the series over the past few, year, few years, but who could forget last year when Iowa State defeated Nebraska in Lincoln 9-7. The Cyclones and Huskers kick off 2.30 Saturday afternoon, and the game will be televised regionally on ABC. Just a reminder to our viewers that November 6th is Daylight Savings Time, so turn your clocks back and enjoy that hour of sleep. Thanks for watching, and tune in on Sunday for Newswatch at 7 p.m. For more news, weather, and sports, have a good night.